what's up you guys this is Rob from Gay Guy Plays and today we've got a little bit of a sampler when it comes to the Zephyr Prime review I want to show you guys a couple tips and tricks some of my builds some loadouts and of course we're gonna go ahead and touch on fashion frames so without ado let's jump on in now as always when it comes to these primes the links to their relics are down in the description box below and that's mainly because of the fact that I am in nowhere near responsible enough to keep on top of exactly where everything is dropping from whether something gets vaulted or something gets moved listen I'm not doing it so if you're curious take a look down in the links there however I do want you guys to be aware that she does require mastery rank 6 to craft now if you want to go ahead and bypass that you can always pick her up for real cash in Zephyr Prime access while it's still available. So before we jump into the builds, I figured I would go ahead and give you a quick stack comparison between Zephyr and Zephyr Prime. Now in addition to the bonus polarities that she's received, she's also got a boost to her armor, a nice increase to her base energy, which is fantastic for some of those tighter builds out there as it can free up a slot for you. And in addition to that, she's also got a movement speed increase, which is fantastic because as we know, turbulence doesn't take care of melee enemies, but movement speed definitely does. As for the build, I'm going to be completely honest with you, there is a lot of flexibility when it comes to building for Zephyr. However, I do have a couple stats that I really want to press into you guys. Definitely get some range in there, get some duration, and get some efficiency, mainly because of the fact that Zephyr heavily depends on turbulence um, for her survivability. Now, speaking of survivability, survivability mods are one of those things that are very, very debatable when it comes to Zephyr, but as you can see here, I am rocking a Vitality and Redirection, and the main reason I'm doing that is because because this is reality. <laughs> and I know you're gonna be like, what Rob? What do you mean? Um, because of the fact that there's a lot of people that are out there that will tell you, well, you're gonna have turbulence on all the time, so enemies are like never gonna hit you anyway. That's a bull cocky lie. If we're gonna be completely honest here, there is definitely some times when missions get heated and occasionally slip ups happen. You know, every now and then you're kind of like focused and you're in the zone, you're shooting down your enemies, and then a freaking butcher comes up the back of you and just baps you in the hand. You're like, God damn it. Or maybe you're like moving through an area and you're trying to like bullet jump through, and all of a sudden you got um, a heavy like ground stomping and knocking you down. Listen. You're gonna take hits at some point. Sometimes it's that goddamn motherfucking bombard. Because we know there is no ranged enemy that can take on Zephyr. However, a fucking lucky little piece of crap bombard can ricochet their goddamn rockets off the side of your turbulence. And it might, most of the time, when you've got enough range, like you do in this build, you don't really have to worry about it. But if you're in a tight area and sometimes it just gets the right ricochet, it just, you know, sends that rocket right above your head or it sends that rocket off to the side and you start taking some splash damage. So I'm modding like a realistic player, not like one of these players that pretends that death just never happens and you're never going to get hit. I'm being real here. And I'm putting in my survivability mods. Now, do you have to do that? No, you don't have to do that whatsoever, especially if you're playing lower level content. It's really not something that you um, have to think about. However, I do like taking Zephyr into extended duration runs. So, you know, it's nice to have a little buffer there just in case. Speaking of mistake buffers, we also have natural talent in here. Now, Natural Talent actually took the place of my Prime Flow. I was using Prime Flow before when Zephyr had a smaller energy pool, um, but I feel like, you know, you sometimes get these gaps. You know, I'm, I'm being realistic because we all have these moments where you're casting your ability, you're, you're tossing up your turbulence, and you see that little blue ping of a little light that comes across your screen and boom! You get sniped by a nullifier and you're like, damn it, you were nowhere close to me. How did you get me right when I was casting my ability? So natural talent definitely cuts down on that. I figured I would go ahead and play around with it um, in this build, uh, you know, because of the fact that I was like, I don't really feel like I need prime flow. Now on the word of and of uh, efficiency. Uh, we have Arcane Energize and we have Streamline in there. Uh, usually you guys see me rocking a uh, Fleeting Expertise that goes along with this, but I'm going to be completely honest with you, Zephyr isn't really an energy hungry frame. You're not using her abilities like ridiculously. You're not spamming them left, right, and center. So an Arcane Energize um, and a Streamline is pretty much enough to keep you uh, maintained, especially with as much duration as you have with narrow-minded and prime continuity. So all of that kind of works together in jives, and you should be um, able to pretty much take on any ranged targets, and you'll be 100% fine. Now, what I'm actually going to go ahead and do is show you guys how this performs, and um, exactly 
why uh, I hate Bombard. So as you can see, we've got Billion Friends set up here <laughs> to kind of depict exactly what you would go ahead and see in a run. We also have Invincibility turned off because, you know, I don't want to cheat. But as you can see here, you know, we want to... We want to take down. We want to take down the issue. The issue people, as you can see right here. Get that nullifier out of here. Well, let's get that. Let's get that asshole out of here too. Uh, let's take out that nullifier real quick. And as you can see, not a single goddamn bombard rocket. I might. Oh, is the bombard dead? No. Okay. I, I was like, let's leave that bombard. That bombard guy up for a little bit, so you can see exactly like how far off he is. So uh, he's getting closer and closer. And I saw that rocket whiz by my head. And Rob got a little bit nervous there, but as you can see here, while the uh, slash procs are eating away at him, just uh, hit this guy over here, and we're fine and dandy. And that's pretty much how it uh, plays out. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, one of the things that you did see in that build as well as an Arcane Energize was an Arcane Strike. And that's because I like using melee with Zephyr a lot. It does put you in harm's way a lot of the times. Um, but I do kind of want to point out the fact that you don't necessarily need to use Arcane Strike. You can use whatever Arcane kind of benefits you know, the weapon that you're currently using a lot of. Now, in this case, I kind of demonstrated with uh, the Tiberon, but as you can see right here, um, with the loadout that I'm going to show you guys later, the one that I use for my extended runs, I like Strike because I'm using a lot of melee. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. You can go ahead and change that for any of the other other mods out there, like uh, Fury or Precision. I can't remember. Listen, I'm bad with names, so off the top of my head, I'm not going to remember them all, but you can go ahead and swap into them because, as we know, Zephyr is a primary defensive frame in her kit so she's got to bring in the big guns if she plans on sticking around for some of those bigger targets okay so now we've got a little bit of a weapons change and I think that some of you guys know exactly where I'm going with this however the next build that I wanted to show you is a jet stream build many of you guys are very very aware of the fact that I hate things that boost my movement speed to ridiculous lengths. Like, I cannot stand Volt Speed, um, Nijaz Firewalker, I try not to, like, you know, get too, like, insanely irritated with, especially because he's got that slide. I'm like, stop it, stop it, stop it. Um, and I really didn't want it for Zephyr, but I know that you guys love your Jetstream. So, of course, if I'm going to do a Jetstream build, we're going to do a Jetstream and Tonkor build. Now, for those of you guys who are a little bit newer and don't really know exactly the way that this works, Jetstream has an interesting interaction um, with the Tonkor. Once you can get it to have enough flight speed, the Tonkor will actually explode on impact instead of bounce on impact. So as you can see here for this build, we've kind of reprioritized some of the uh, stats. Uh, we've actually gone ahead and jumped down to a Prime Vigor, so we have an additional free spot open for a little bit more power strength. Um, we've got still a focus on duration and range. However, we've got just enough power strength in order to make the Tonkor explode on contact. So we're sitting at 154. Now, for those of you guys who've never seen this before, um, I'll actually go ahead and demonstrate real quick. So I'm going to actually take that out. And now we're down to 124. I'm going to turn on uh, turbulence real quick, and I'm going to go ahead and fire the Tonkor. So as you can see here, it uh, just bounces like normal, and then it goes and explodes. However, once you go ahead and hit that juicy 154 power strength mark, which is actually a lot lower than it used to be, because remember, the Tonkor got a, um, a flight speed increase just innately. But as you can see here, let's go ahead and cast that jet stream, and boom, it explodes on contact. So it's like a faster mini Ogress that has more crit on it. <laughs> um, now, as you can see, when it comes down to uh, the Arcanes on there, we are rocking an Arcane Energize. Feel free to kind of like swap that out as you choose to give yourself a little bit more of an offensive benefit. However, I wanted to go ahead and show you the way that this works against a group of enemies. We do have Billion Friends once again. However, if I'm going to be real with you, the Tonkor isn't the weapon that it used to be before. It's a little bit rough against 155, so we have dropped this down um, to 100s. So I hope you guys are okay with that. But I'm being realistic, all right? I'm being realistic. We're not gonna. I'm not lying to you. I just want you guys to see exactly how this works. So as you can see here, we've got uh, the Tonkor explosion straight out the gate. We're just going and hitting these enemies real fast. Oh, see, this is why, this is why I, I don't use the Tonkor. 
it's it's the the reality and the moment of Rob just absolutely not being good with explosive weapons. I've I've come to terms. Listen, I've come to terms with the fact that if I use anything explosive, it will end up killing me. That's just the reality of the situation. But as you can see here, um, we're getting explosion on contact, which a lot of people are really, really into. Now, me, um, I was used to the Tomcor's bounce way back in the day. And as you can see, we still got enough range in there to help deflect um, the, what do you call this? Oh my god, the Bombard Rockets, which is definitely nice. I'm going to actually reposition over here real quick. Um, and we're going to refresh Turbulence. And uh, we're going to see if maybe we can hit, maybe we can hit it. Can we hit that thing up there, please? There you go. What? We hit it. It should be dead. Oh my god, that is such bullshit. It should be... Listen. 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 Call your senator. Let them know that there has been a great injustice perpetrated here today. Um, but as you can see, it's just exploding on contact. Yeah. That's where we're going to leave that. Alrighty, so before we jump into my favorite survival loadout with Zephyr, I figured I would go ahead and show you guys a couple quick tips and tricks, whether you're a little bit newer to her or haven't caught up on the most recent patches because they have introduced a couple new things. Now, first and foremost, as you guys know with Tailwind, you hold it down to charge. The shorter the charge, the lower you are going to be off of the ground. The longer the charge, the higher you're going to be up in the air, and the duration also kind of goes along with that. So as you can see here, it's just a short charge, we're up in the air, and we should be down fairly quick. So it's almost just kind of like a little floaty jump but the longer you hold it and here's the thing you can actually charge it past the reticule however you're not going to get bonus time or bonus air off of that it's just you're just going to do this crazy odd animation here but as you can see there the longer we charge it the higher up we are now the issue with this is the only way to really get down is wait for it to wear off or use a dive bomb but d has actually released a little bit of an addition that you can actually just roll out of it so if uh, you are looking to get out of your tailwind a little bit earlier regardless of how long or short it is you can actually just go ahead and give it a little bit of a roll and boom you're out uh now when we're talking about duration of how long you can hold it sometimes you want a little bit longer of a duration but you don't necessarily want to go up that high you can hold down tailwind and as you can see we're fully charging this baby and you guys remember how high up we got but you can actually stop and control how high you go by zooming in so as you can see here we're actually not past that point, but we've got some duration on it. As you can see, we're not, like, dropping down anytime soon. We've got some time. We've got some air time, which is absolutely fantastic. And if you want to come down, you could just wait for it to come down, or you could just roll on out of it, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Now, one of my favorite uh, tips for Zephyr, and this is my favorite thing on Earth. So we're going to uh, pull out a couple friends here. Now... Everybody knows that the new air burst is an ability that they've added in. So what you can do is you can use air burst to clear enemies off of points, right? However, sometimes you want to hit these assholes. So instead of clearing them out, you could just do a quick dive bomb and they don't get ragged all the way. You can actually just give them a smack right as they're there. So you have two different options as to how you want to control your enemies. You can either ragdoll them off of points if you just don't want to deal with them, or you can go ahead and knock them down as to keep them in the same area, and you could use uh, finishers, ground finishers on any of them without necessarily having to worry about chasing them down. And I think that those are some of the key things that I wanted to keep out there. There is another tip that I'm going to give you guys during my survival talk with Zephyr, because uh, there's a lot of things going on with that one. So oddly enough, one of the things that I don't really do on the channel is talk about loadouts. I can show you guys individual builds for weapons and warframes, but I never kind of put it together for you guys to jive on, um, which... I don't really understand why I do that. However, I wanted to go ahead and show you what pairs up with this build because as you can see, I am using an Arcane Strike. So that should give you a clue that we are going to be taking a look at um, one of my favorite matchings is a Pole Arm Zaw. Well, actually, technically, it's a Stave Zaw. So as you can see here, and I did not realize this, this is like my second take and I'm laughing at myself because legit, I have the Strike, which is the Plague Keyword, the Grip, which is the Plague Boquin, and the Link, which is the Jai 2. And it makes a really Really cool balance saw. So as you can see here, we've got 18% uh, critical chance and 22% status chance. So they're kind of balanced in that way. And uh, what you can do with that is you can make a little bit of a hybrid build. So we do have condition overload and we do have blood rush on this as well. I also tossed in primed reach. Now that one is a bit important mainly because of the fact that we're trying to keep enemies at bay with Zephyr. 
So having Zephyr go in melee range is a little bit not really what you want to do. You usually want to keep enemies off of you, especially those goddamn bombards. Um, however, we'll get to that in a second. And as you can see here too, in one of the most recent patch notes, and this is something that I've actually just been playing with, is Exodia Force. So Exodia Force actually gives you a chance to um, deal an AoE, which is 6 meters, 200% uh, weapon damage, uh, you have a 50% chance to do that whenever you inflict a status. So you do that, and it's also affected by the melee combo counter. So this all ties into the fact that we're using Narrowmon on top of all of that. And to boost up a little bit more of the critical end of the spectrum, because we've got the status covered there, right? We're doing we're doing a lot of status. We've got 57% status there, and then we've got a 50% chance off of that to proc um, an AOE. And then, of course, we have our Adarza, which you guys, you know, I might as well show you the build right now. This is what I'm currently using, and because we have Cat's Eye on this to boost up the critical chance by 60%, uh, percent, so that's a flat additional just on top of that bonus. And of course, we're also using um, Naramon on top of it. Everything just jives together to make her just this. No to all of the range damage that y'all are doing to me, and I'm going to hit you with this big long stick. And it's definitely one of my favorites. Okay, so I figured I would go ahead and cut in some survival footage to show off exactly what we're working with and to make a couple notes. Now, the first thing that you need to do when you're playing Zephyr, especially in tenser situations, is you want to keep an eye on your turbulence. Legitimately, even though we've got some survivability mods in there, those are only going to keep you alive for so long. So make sure you watch your turbulence timer. Okay, um, and after you've actually played around with your build for a while, you'll almost get into this rhythm where you can kind of like feel like it's starting to wear off. So you'll be, you know, playing, 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 and you're like, you look down, you're like, five seconds left. You're like, cool, cool, we're on the same rhythm. So once you see those numbers go down, the thing that you need to do is find a safe place to cast turbulence or make a safe place to cast turbulence. So you can go ahead and throw out some of those air bursts to kind of like knock down and ragdoll enemies. So you get, a, you know, a little bit of safe time in order to bring turbulence turbulence back up. Now, speaking of um, things that you need to be aware of, one is, of course, the big bad bastard Billy the Bombard. He's a piece of crap, especially when you go up into higher levels. Now, of course, you're not going to get hit um, with his rockets if he's approaching from far away, but let's say you round a corner and there the little bastard is, or the big bastard is. You're just kind of like, oh my god, get out of my face. I hope he doesn't fire off a rocket. I hope he ground pounds instead. And that's kind of like what I'm talking about when it comes to survivability mods. For the most part, you should be able to, you know, take a rocket, not to the face, but like some splash damage from rocket and you'll be fine. But the best way to deal with them, to be completely honest with you, is to throw out an air burst. So as soon as you see their face, just air burst. Just air burst them down and then run your ass on over to them and start meleeing the crap out of them uh, so that they can be dead, which is exactly the way that I prefer my bombards. The other kind of jackalope that you need to worry about in these missions is, of course, the nullifier. And always be aware of your nullifiers, especially when you're casting turbulence, because they love to kill you right during the animation, because they're bastards too. Um, however, the way I deal with these is because I have so much range on my melee weapon, I can actually kind of like outskirt the edge of these nullifiers to whittle it down so I don't have to swap weapons because I'm lazy, you know? And this is why I almost call this like the kamikaze build because legitimately while a majority of enemies can't kill you, you are diving in with melee and that's really a bit dangerous when it comes to that for Zephyr. So definitely be aware of that. And of course the one thing that kills me on almost every survival is uh, forgetting, um, you know, life support. So that's what does it for me a majority of the time. Uh, as you can see, my incompetence with explosives and life support. I'm just not good at keeping myself alive, okay? Okay, so with all of that out of the way, I figured we would go ahead and close things out with a little bit of fashion frame. And when I say a little bit of fashion frame, I mean just a little. For those of you guys who are veterans to my channel, you guys know how I roll. Whenever I like to do a prime frame, I like to keep them looking prime. So we're not gonna do anything too crazy. In fact, I usually don't change up the looks unless there is a Tenogen skin or a Deluxe skin that we need to address. Then I'll go ahead and jump out of my comfort zone. But as you can see here, my Vobon Prime still looks very much like Vobon Prime. Same thing goes for Trinity, same thing goes for Oberon. Basically, I still stay within those realms because I just, I want them to look like Primes. You know what I mean? Just better variations of that. 
So with that said, let's get dressed. Now when it comes to armor sets, I'm going to be completely honest with you, Zephyr is one of those anomalies that can pretty much wear almost anything when it comes to prime armor sets. Um, legitimately, we've tried the Acanthus and that looks great. We've tried the Atavis, the Edo Prime. Um, all of those look great. Even the, where are you? The Sprit Sail looks fantastic and the Targis also looks really, really good. And there are always some issues with chest plate placing when it comes to the Targis that I'm not super, super fond of, but it still manages to make it look very good. The only thing that I will say is for some reason, the shoulder placements to some of these things look a little bit off. Um, but as you can see here, the Acanthus is actually one of my favorites. So I actually like doing Acanthus shoulders and Acanthus legs. I don't, I leave the chest bare because I like having the sigil there. Um, but even with the Edo Prime, if something looks a little bit weird, I think it's because of the shape of the shoulder itself. And there's just kind of like no way of fixing that. Of course, Edo looks fantastic on everything, so you can't say that. One of the things that threw me for a loop though is I actually don't like the way that the, um, the Avia shoulder plates look on this, which the Avias look pretty good on everything. Thing, but because of the fact that uh, Zephyr is so spiky, if you really want to go for a feathery look, the Acanthus Prime is really the way you want to go. Now, the surprise contender for me here is actually one thing that I haven't used very much, but I'm actually thinking that it's going to be my main look for Zephyr. I might do a couple tweaks, but I love the way that the Katira Foros chest plate sits on on her to go biddies. <laughs> so we've got that set there. Um, I don't like the arms. The arms, again, like I was saying, kind of fall really oddly. You know, the shoulder pieces, I'm not super a big fan of that. But I love the kind of like subtle bonuses that the Katir uh, Foros gives. So it's not anything too over the top. It's just a little bit of extra metallic. Let's take a look at the Katir um, Foros shoulder plates. Again, as you can see, it's like this weird kind of like, because it's layered and angled, it doesn't look quite right or as, as right as I would like it to look. So that's actually, um, I'm actually just gonna skip out on those. I'm like, just gonna leave it here and I think she looks fine and dandy that way. I'm probably gonna go ahead and remove that sigil there too. So you can see, because I think it looks a little bit better without the sigil, even though the unity will just toss on her back and we'll call that a day. Because you know, we gotta have a little unity up in there. But as you can see, I think that looks pretty fucking fantastic. That's probably my favorite look. Um, now, before we go, I did want to go ahead and do the thing that everybody always asks for, and I feel like it's a terrible, it's a terrible, terrible idea, but we'll give it a shot. So as you can see here, we're actually going to go ahead and jump from helmet to helmet. So Zephyr Prime Helmet, of course, looks fantastic. Um, the Cicero Helmet. Not the greatest. As you can see, there is definitely some textural differences in there that don't make it look so fantastic. And the gray that carries through is, uh, I believe, like the gray from the body. So basically what happens is we get no metallics on the head and it's really sad. Now the Hagoromo is definitely one of my favorites and I haven't seen how this looks yet. It's okay. It's actually, you know what? Just not fucking bad. I would say Hagoromo. Hagoromo's in there if you really want to use the Hagoromo and aren't fond of the uh, fond of the Zephyr Prime helmet you can give that um, a chance especially because of the fact that it does carry some of the metallics through I'm liking that uh, the plain Zephyr helmet clearly just does not hold up uh, the Megisi helmet um I'm gonna say a pass to I really for a lot of these Tenogen helmets if they don't use metallics in the right places it does not look right the monsoon kind of looks like a like like a faceless creature and it kind of scares me a little bit the shape works well with it you know because it has that kind of flare up there kind of almost matches with the neck piece not super fond of the face though it kind of scares me a little bit and the Tengu we saw at the very beginning and it was bad so really the only thing I'm signing off on is the prime and the Hagoromo um, let's go ahead and do that real quick, and then let's swap over, because, you know, we gotta see how the prime details look. So, we have my Hagoromo look here, and I've never actually toggled it on, so I'm scared. Oh! I am pleasantly surprised! Okay! The chest is a little bit off. We could fiddle with some of those colors, to be completely honest with you. Hold on. 
I don't 100% hate it. I definitely have to tweak around some colors, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's definitely something I think that you guys can play with. I think that works kind of well. If y'all want to play with that, play with that. I'm not going, I'm not going to go against that at all. I think that's fantastic. Um, so give that a shot. That's definitely... We're going to be uh, readdressing you sometime soon, hun. Uh, but that about does it for this episode. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed all of the different things that we have covered with Zephyr today, from the tips and tricks to the loadout that we did to the builds and all of that. Um, let me know in the comments below how you guys are feeling about Zephyr. Maybe you learned a little something. Maybe you didn't learn a little something. But uh, hopefully this inspires you guys to go and play a little bit more. So with that said, um, I'm going to let you guys go. And as always, love somebody. Hurt nobody and touch your body. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.